So now this is section five of chapter four. We're going to discuss Cush and the fall of the Cushite kingdom. Some of Egypt in the area now known as Nubia, people established the first kingdom in the interior of Africa called Cush, or south of Egypt. Today, Nubia is a desert, but in ancient Cush, it was more fertile than it is today. It was rich in minerals such as gold, copper, stone, things like that. Uh, they also depended on the Nile. They also depended on agriculture. Because of the flooding of the Nile, they could grow both summer and winter crops. Some farmers became wealthy and gained power, which led to the development of Cush. Uh, when someone made themselves king of Cush, one day they was like, hey, I'm the king of Cush. And people was like, cool, go with it. Uh, the capital of Cush was Karma. Cush and Egypt were neighbors and both lived in peace and at war. They would sometimes be at peace with each other, sometimes they'd be at war. As the Cush army started to grow, the Egyptians were they would get too strong, so they decided to do something about that. So uh, in 1500 BC, Pharaoh Tutmos I sent an army to take control of Cush and destroy Karma. Cush would become a part of Egypt during that time. So during that time, Egypt absorbs Cush as part of their kingdom. And you see Cush down here at the bottom. Uh, this is Upper Egypt. This is Lower Egypt. Um, and this is Cush. After taking over, Cush was a part of Egypt for 450 years. The people of Cush started dressing like Egyptians, adopting religious practices from, from the Egyptians, and they had Egyptian names. In the mid-1000s BC, the new kingdom of Egypt was coming to an end, and the people of Cush took it back. So the people of Cush basically took on this identity as being Egyptian. They were taken over by the Egyptians. They started to, uh, naming their kids adoption or uh, naming their kids Egypt, Egyptian names. Uh, they started dressing like they were Egyptian. They started worshiping the Egyptian gods, and they really kind of took on that idea until the kingdom of Cush took back over when the new kingdom. Uh, was coming to an end. Around 850 BC, Cush had regained its strength. As it strengthened, Egypt would weaken. And this would lead to two people. The first one is Kostya, which was a Kushite that took over Egypt. First took over and, and developed power in Egypt. And then you have Pianchi, which was a Kushite king that ruled over all of Egypt. By the time of Pianchi, it was ruled over all of the entirety of Egypt. When Pianchi died, his brother Shabaka took control of the kingdom and declared himself Pharaoh. Uh, Shabaka and the later rulers of this dynasty believed they were heirs to the great pharaohs of Egypt. And so uh, Shabaka took control when Pianchi died and declared himself Pharaoh. Shabaka wrote about many of the traditions of the Egyptians that declined with them, such as burial of the pharaohs, and a pyramid, which was something that didn't happen during the weakest part of Egyptian history. They eventually got where they were burying pharaohs in the Valley of the Kings. And so Shabaka was going to bring back burial in Egyptian-style pyramids. The Kushite dynasty in Egypt ended in the 670s when the Assyrians invaded. Within 10 years, all the Kush forces were pushed out of Egypt and after losing Egypt, the people of Kush dedicated themselves again to agriculture and building a powerful kingdom. The new capital of Kush was Moroi, and here is where they developed the first iron industry in Africa. So we see that even if they lose Egypt, they're still able to go on and develop and, and create a good kingdom. Moroi became the center of trade networks, or a system of people in different lands who trade goods, and a lot of merchants or traders came through there. Merchants took the, good from, the goods from Kush all over the Mediterranean and the Red Seas to southern Africa, and perhaps even as far as India and China. So we see they develop a large trade network because of taking these items and expanding them different places. And this was, again, during ancient times, which was a huge deal. Uh, exports, of course, as we talked about before, are just items sent out to other regions. Imports are goods brought in from other regions. They would export gold, pottery, iron tools, slaves, and ivory. They imported fine items, jewelry from Egypt, Asia, and other lands among the Mediterranean Sea. So they'd import a lot of these luxury items and export goods or gold, pottery, iron tools, slaves, and ivory. The people of Kush would, continue, would combine their culture with the cultures of other areas to develop a uniquely Kush-type culture. Rulers in Kush were buried in pyramids. 
They took the title of Pharaoh. Um, but they also worshiped their own gods. They came up with their own language, which is Mariotic. Uh, but historians and linguists have never been able to, des to decipher what it actually says. Women in Kush were expected to be active in their society. Some rose to power, uh, with some saying as co-heirs with their husband or sons, and some having complete control. Uh, one of these is Queen Shanakadadito. I butchered that name. Uh, Shanak Dokhedo, I guess, was the first woman to rule in Kush. Different factors caused Kush to decline in power. One of these was allowing their cattle to overgraze, which would cause a lack of grass, which would cause the wind to blow the soil away, which would hurt the farmers, which is a legitimate concern in the agricultural world is letting your letting it to get overgrazed and being exposed to the elements. Iron makers used up the forest near Moroe, causing the furnaces to be shut down. It's like the Dr. Seuss book, The Lorax, uh, where they did pretty much the same thing. They looked around and was like, uh-oh, where'd all the trees go? A loss of trade also contributed to the decline. By the 300s AD, Kush had lost much of his wealth and military power. Uh, king Azana is king of Axum that took over control of Kush. And Axum taken over, took over Kush in the late 300s. The rulers of Axum converted to Christianity, as did Nubia, which completely got rid of any of the Kush influence that was left, any of the Kush religion, and things like that was pushed out when they converted to Christianity. So, that leads us to the end of section 5 and the end of chapter 4.